But I want to share with you just one secret very briefly this morning. I want you to learn. You see, listen. Retreats. Retreats are times when the secrets behind results are shared. Not just that results are celebrated, but the secrets that govern them. You see that? When you make out time to camp before God, that's not a time to just celebrate miracles as wonderful as they are. But there are times when your eyes are open to the dynamics, the operation of the things of the Spirit, so that you can sustain an understanding on how these things work. And I want to share with you a very big secret tonight. Brothers and sisters, it is not enough to be available. You must be usable. I hear people say all the time that all you need to do is to be available. And I understand what they are trying to say. But I have found out in my dealings with God that being available is not enough. You must be usable. You want to host the glory and the power of God upon your life. You want to become a blessing to nations and generations. It takes more than desire. Listen to me. It takes more than just prayer. It takes more than just fasting. It takes more than just Bible study. There is a posture you must take in the spirit that makes all these things valuable. Without which, regardless of what spiritual activity you are doing, it will not profit you. Please, let me have your eyes, your ears, your attention. Are you getting what I'm saying? There are so many people who want to see the glory of God in their lives. They want to be workers of the miraculous. They want their voices to become like the voice of God. They want to host superior dimensions of God's presence. But the challenge is that many of us, and sadly, truthfully speaking, even some of us who walk in little of this dimension, do not even understand the mysteries that govern it. So we enjoy the miracles, but we cannot mentor people into stepping into that reality. The key is not just to pray, you have prayed. The key is not just to fast, you have fasted. The key is not just Bible study alone, you have studied the Bible. But there is an ingredient that is missing. And I want to show you this morning. Follow me. Second Corinthians chapter 4. The apostle was revealing a very deep mystery. Second Corinthians chapter 4. I want to show you the price for the anointing. The price to be at the forefront of God's end time agenda. The price to not only be a man of God but to be a blessing. The price to not just be a speaker but a life giver. The price to be a career of the solutions of men's destinies. There is a price. Second Corinthians chapter 4 please. And verse 12. Blessed be the name of the Lord. 4 and verse 12 this is what it says simple expression it says so then death walketh in us death walketh in us that life will walk in you now listen the apostle is teaching one who was given the mistress of the kingdom by the fellowship of the spirit is showing a secret he said this is the mystery the more death works in us we are able to out of that death communicate life to you there is a relationship between death and glory hear what the bible says verily verily i say unto you except joshua Selman falls down and dies he abided alone there is no capacity to receive life except a condition that is non-negotiable except a corn of wheat falls to the ground and dies the bible says it abided alone it remains but then if it does die 
it resurrects with another life another capacity that is able to bless are you hearing what I'm saying now much more than prayer brothers and sisters much more than fasting until all of you dies to all of him God loves you but he cannot do business with you in this end time it's not about oratory it's not about Greek and Hebrew words as important as they are there is a testament of his presence upon his, his, your, his presence upon your life that cannot be copied by any other thing. You can speak all the English. You can listen to any message and repeat what you hear. But you cannot fake the presence. That presence is a testament that you have met him. It's a badge upon your life. God's accreditation upon you. Except a corn of wheat falls down and dies. There is a relationship between the cross and the throne. The only legal pathway to the throne is the cross. You can maneuver certain routes, but Jesus said, I am the door. You can try to follow through the window, but if you must go officially, he said, I am the door. It is always the sufferings of Christ and the glory that follows. You cannot, listen, I know this is an uncomfortable teaching. If you really mean business with God, then listen to what I'm telling you. There is no way. Listen, when the disciples came, the disciples came to Jesus. Listen now. They had seen the wonderful things that Jesus was doing. And the Bible tells us that when they came to him, they asked a question. James and John, their mother came and said, Please, would you grant, is that true, that when you are now exalted, let my son sit at your left and right. Honor, glory. And Jesus never said the seats are not vacant. He said, here is the condition. Can you drink of my cup and be baptized with my baptism? Drinking has to do with an internal work. The baptism has to do with an external work. He said, if you can do that, then the seat is there for you. It is not just about desire. Can you drink? There are some things in life you don't pray them away. You only obtain grace to pass through them. The challenge with many people who desire to see the hand of God upon their lives. The challenge with many of us who want to see God glorified in our lives. Is that we have desire which is good but not good enough. There must be an obtaining of the grace from God to be able to pass through the requisite conditions. Remember Cain and Abel. The Bible says both of them offered sacrifices. And for one it was received and for Cain they refused. And Cain got angry and the Lord asked him, he said, paraphrasing, if you did it according to pattern, will you be rejected? I did not reject it because you are called Cain. You violated the terms. It is never about God just wanting someone above another. It is whoever can pay that price. And the price is not just to say, Lord, use me. The price is to know that whatever it would take, including death, death is the price of the glory. Mm. When you die in reality, then you have sustained a posture in the spirit where there is no dimension of God you cannot host. The things you pray for will come looking for you in a way that will humble you. But the challenge for many of us is that the vicissitudes of life have a way of distracting us from being focused over the things of God. I will continue to drum it. There is the workings of the Spirit that He must be able to achieve in any individual. Are we together? The workings of the Spirit that must be made manifest in you to be able to carry His power. 
Because you see, many people have disappointed God. He granted them certain measure of the anointing. But because they could not stay sufficient to be dealt with by the Spirit, when they came on board, they could not sustain that glory. You see, let me tell you, the glory of God is a double-edged sword. It can bless you and it can kill you. It's like a knife. It depends on how you hold it. When the anointing of the Spirit comes upon you, and all kinds of great things begin to happen in your life, if you have not died, then you will see another life springing from you that is not sponsored by God. And that is why great people cannot stand. Please listen to me, especially the leaders. This is the reason why many people never last. Today they are up after three, five years. You find out that, let me tell you, it is true we are all human. But you are never called to do God's business as a human being. There is a supply of His grace. So, the fact that we are human should not give us a flimsy excuse to allow our lives to continue to be a shame to God and act as if I am human. No, sir. If you stayed in that school and you were trained well, a system would have been put in you that shields you from those things. The Bible says we do not have a high priest who has not been tempted like us in every way. So he knows you are a man. He knows in that ministry there will be beautiful ladies. He knows in that ministry there will be handsome brothers. He knows in that ministry there will be rich men you will meet. He knows in that ministry there will be politicians. And so he says, come and let me walk upon you. So that when that glory comes, even if it is one billion naira, the death that has walked in you will sustain grace to remain faithful. Are you getting what I'm saying now? The anointing, let me tell you something. You see, the glory of God is very charismatic in operation. Meaning that it makes you delight some. It creates a system of attraction. Everybody and everything wants to come around you. It is your death that becomes your bailout system. That you have died to yourself, to your appetites, to your ambitions. I can... My eyes can be open in the realm of the spirit. And I can see this gentleman's account number. Watch this. And tell him what his account number is. That's the gift of God. But how I use it is no longer up to God. I can take advantage of that prophetic grace and my own renewedness to extract money out of him. Just because I gave a correct revelation does not mean it's God that continued the process. God stopped by revelation. My flesh continued. You see that? Just because the anointing of the Spirit flows around does not mean that everything that is done is God. There is an interplay of flesh and spirit. And it takes death to be able to fine-tune your operation such that everything that comes out from you sustains the level of purity that reflects Christ. This is the assignment. That death works in us so that life will work in people. The degree to which death works in us is the degree to which it can flow through us to become a blessing. It's not enough to say, Lord, give me power. Lord, let me take my generation for you. Wonderful prayer as it is. But God tells you, come. When you begin to do business with God, He does not discuss power. He does not discuss miracles. He discusses death. There is a tendency in you. There is a tendency for pride. There is a tendency for lust. This has nothing to do with whether you are good or bad. It's God's diagnosis about the state of any man he has not accredited. So, we are not saying you are a bad person. When you come to God, until he vets you, you cannot host his glory. You can act like you have it. Men can give you an impression that you have it. But brothers and sisters, when you see a career of the glory, you know. You know. Animate and inanimate things will know that this one is a career of the glory. Are we together? Yes. The end of the dealings of God is to bring you to a point where your life 
not your ministry, not your academics, not your marriage, not your business. Your life becomes a reflection of Christ in truth. Let me tell you, the foundation for truly glorifying Christ is that your life glorifies Him first. Your ministry can glorify Christ without you glorifying Christ. Your finances can glorify Christ without you glorifying Christ. He's interested in your life. My son, give me your heart. Leave your talent. You, we will deal with that later. Give me your heart. Give me your heart. Not your skills. Not your prayer. Not your fasting. Give me your heart. Everything. The epicenter of your self-worth. Hand it over to me. And then I bring beauty and glory out of your life. Colossians chapter 3, please. Colossians chapter 3. Colossians 3 Here's what the Bible says I want you to listen very carefully It says If then Ye be risen with Christ If it is true That the Bible did not lie That when he died You died with him and in him if it is true that the Bible did not lie, that when he resurrected, you resurrected with him, then it says, seek those things which are above, where Christ is seated. It says, set your affection. Listen now. The apostle is mentoring a generation. Set your affection on the things that are above and not of the things that are on the earth. It says, for ye are, read it, for ye are, and your life is hidden with Christ, and that in God. It says, when Christ with our life shall appear, then ye shall also appear with him in glory. Now he begins to teach you. He gave you the general scope, and he's guiding you now. Are you ready now? Number five. Mortify therefore your members. Aha. Uh -huh. He's teaching you how to die. He's teaching you how to, to walk in the experience of death that brings you glory. Mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth. Fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil desire, and covetousness, which is idolatry. For which things sake the wrath of God cometh upon the sons of disobedience. Now, notice there. He's listing certain things that are the weaknesses of men who are not dead. They are not bad people. He's saying by reason of wearing a mortal body, this is what you have to face until you die. No matter who you are, Apostle Joshua, Selman, or whoever, if you are not dead, Genuinely, you won't escape fornication. If you are not dead, genuinely, you will escape inordinate affection. It's not about being good or bad. It's the side effect of being human. Take over, Jehovah. I have come to the end of myself. Take over. Jehovah, I have touched the end of myself. Hallelujah, hallelujah, I have come to the end of myself. You see, brothers and sisters, let me tell you the truth under God. You know what I'm telling you is the truth. I counsel people, I counsel pastors. Eight out of every ten is the limitation of the flesh. Not because they are bad. Just like it's happening to you. Some of you love God with all your heart. But simply because you have not learned the system by which men die to the flesh in the spirit, you find yourself again and again. It's a circumcision that is happening to us this morning. So that we will be better hosts of the glory. Paul 
Paul himself said, Look, with my spirit I serve the Lord. But then in my body I see another law walking. So that the things I do not want to do, I find myself doing it. That masturbation, I don't want it. I'm even embarrassed to talk about it. But I find myself doing it. I still fast for three days and three nights. And as soon as I finish, there I go back again. You are not bad. You are just human. And if you do not learn the technology in the spirit that immunes men from this thing, you can think everybody is doing it just because you have tried and tried and tried and tried and tried and nothing happened. So then death works in us. There are dimensions of the glory of God you can never host until there is a level of death that you carry. Believe me, brothers and sisters, when I tell you this. Fornication, uncleanliness, inordinate affection, evil desires, covetousness. And then it says, verse 7, let's read together. Just look at it as I read. Verse, verse, verse 8 now. It says, but now, put off all these. Ready? Anger. Do you know how many great leaders, some of you are leaders here, and your anger is beyond imagination. You preach well, you heal the sick, you even prophesy. But that anger, you are even surprised when you see it. I'm here to show you a way out. Anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. Nine, lie not to one another, seeing that you have put up the old man and his deeds. Then it says to put on, verse 12, Therefore as the elect of God, holy and beloved, tender mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering, forbearing one another, forgiving one another, if any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave, it says also forgive. 14. Above all, it says put on the bond of love. Put on love, which is the bond of perfectness. So Paul is speaking to us that there are weightier matters of the Spirit greater than miracles greater than all these things you see on the ground this is manifestations of the spirit that your life when your life and your message becomes the same you are truly a living sacrifice let me tell you this listen hold on mike i want to teach you something when satan wants to destroy please leaders listen these are the leaders right let me talk to you when satan wants to destroy a great man of god do you know what he does he studies the message God has given you and studies what aspect of that message is strongest in your life. His assignment is to make you a victim of it. Because the moment you are a victim of it, you cannot preach that dimension with as much conviction again. That's the assignment. When Jesus was hungry, the first temptation was around food. First. Then his assignment Are you listening to me? That's the reason why you find out that people who hold certain convictions can no longer hold those convictions after two or three years. They have tasted of the rivers that they should not drink of. The devil has made them victims of those messages. So you cannot emphasize that which should be emphasized. Now, and I'm not condemning you. That's not what I'm doing. But I'm calling your attention to the fact that the moment Satan descends the grace of God upon your life, then the first place of attack is the validity of your message. Because you love God too much and he knows that guilt will haunt you every time you have to preach along the area where you are a victim of. If I preach, for instance, in the area of love for God and passion and all of this, and all of a sudden my prayer life goes down. My word life goes down. I still love God. 
it will be difficult for me to come and tell you I want to release grace on your prayer life because the guilt of my non-prayer will haunt me. So I will water down the message to accommodate my weaknesses. That is why death must walk in us. One of the greatest killers, hear me brothers and sisters, of our walk with God is the limitation of the flesh. The limitation of the flesh. Everything that has to do with your body must come under subjection. Some of you don't like what I'm sharing, but listen, it is the ingredient that brings glory to your life. Listen to my message, Why Revivals Die. I teach there that the only reason why revivals die is the humanity of men. Not sin. The humanity of men. The fact that you are human, Satan knows that it is only the keeper of Israel who does not sleep and does not slumber. For you, you can be weary. You can be tired. He will wait. At that point you are tired, that's when he attacks your life. He knows you can have marital problems. He knows you can have academic problems. So the devil comes as a man of God. You love God with all your heart. And then you see three carryovers. And you go back. Although you are greatly anointed, you are broken down. That's where he comes with his attack. Because he knows you are weakest. But I want to teach you a system in the spirit. Where you can rise and frustrate Satan forever. He will wait for you forever and never see your back on the floor. Are we together? Do you know why God does not anoint some of us beyond certain levels? Because your dealings with Him has not gotten to a level where you can manage the challenges that come with that new level of anointing. Because when God increases you, men will hate you. They will look and console them that we are all humans. Death works in us. Please hear me, brothers and sisters. We will never last if we do not learn how to mortify this flesh. The flesh is the greatest, not Satan, the flesh is the greatest limitation to your hosting the glory of God. All of a sudden you rise and then you now say, why are you calling me brother Joshua? Have you forgotten that I'm Apostle Joshua Selman? <laughs> you see, it's not my fault. It is the limitation of my humanity. Because I think by those titles it will make people respect me. Honor to whom honor is due. But when you die, it's amazing how you will pass the things that should distract you and you will not be distracted. Because a dead man cannot be distracted. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? There are many people who have hosted the glory of God. And all of a sudden, as a great man of God, you are counseling and here comes this beautiful sister who loves God and loves you too. Man of God, I have a problem. What is the problem? Ah, this and that, I have a weakness in my life. And the devil capitalizes on your awareness that she is weak and begins to introduce a dimension to you. Many people will not deal with these things because our generation has tainted them. We are all human. Yes, I know we are humans. But brothers and sisters, let's tell ourselves the truth and use retreats like this to trust God to rise to a level where we become a light indeed. Are we together? Yes. You will receive all the impartation and all the miracles and all of that. Those things are not the issue. These are the weightier matters of the spirit. So we have people, our generation, you will bear me witness, people of God, our generation does not lack revelation. There is nowhere, nobody brags with revelation in this generation. There are dimensions upon dimensions. You will find, you will listen to men of God come up with truth from one angle to the other. People have pieces Greek and Hebrew to the core. So you don't impress anybody with just Greek and Hebrew or revelation. No. You may be saying something somebody learned 20 years ago. Just because he's nodding does not mean he's impressed. But that weightier matter of the spirit is when your life in truth. And you see, brothers and sisters, the glory of God that stems out of a life of true holiness and righteousness is reflective. People can discern when you and your message are one. 
It's not by the huskiness of your voice. They know when you stand true before God, you can preach with conviction. Knowing that by the grace of God, my conscience stands clear. That I have obtained the grace of God and I have taken advantage of what it provides. And I can be a communicator of life. You have listened to many messages. You have so many of them on your phones. You have attended several other conferences. Next year, by His grace, you are coming here again. Some of you already, you are preachers with power and signs and wonders. Seated here in this congregation looking at me. Just because you are seated somewhere at the back does not mean you are not anointed. So I'm not doubting the anointing upon your life. I'm not doubting the fact that you are a preacher of fire. I'm not doubting the fact that after this conference there is even another program you are going to. Let's sit down and allow the purging of the Spirit to produce something in us that is capable of releasing life into men. You see, let me tell you, when you minister to men, you transfer every experience you have to them. I can, I can be suffering from loss now, God forbid, but I'm just giving you an example. I can be suffering from the spirit of loss and come and minister to you. You will be surprised that you will receive grace for prayer and with it is another addition. You will leave a conference full of prayer, but you will be surprised that all of a sudden some thoughts begin to come to your mind. It is the limitation of my impurity that was transferred to you. That's the reason why a man of God must stay with God and be true. It's not just the hunger to lay hands, the hunger to minister. Lord, what is leaving me to the people? Can it kill them? The fact that people are standing up from a wheelchair, I don't downplay the place of miracles. A number of you here follow our ministry and you know what God is doing. I don't downplay these things, but I am telling you these brothers and sisters, listen to me. More than all these things, the real key is your life, not your songs, not your preaching, not the activities, your life. Let my life be the temple of your spirit. Let my spirit feel the warmth of your embrace. Let me be a holy habitation where your spirit is pleased to dwell. Oh Lord, I want to know your glory. I want to offer a sacrifice of praise Fill this temple, Lord With your spirit Once again Listen What happens to you when you die? Nothing in this world can move you again Nothing It doesn't mean you will not have the gifts God will give you it doesn't mean you will not have the honor God will give you. But you have come to a point where you are separate from these things. Believe me, brothers and sisters. A point in your life where somebody can look at you. You can look at a billion naira and say, Lord, I love you more than this. And if this will take your place in my life, let it go. And you don't go and cry later and say, ah, I was foolish. No. <laughs> uh. I know how you are dead by what you can give up for him. Show me. When you say, Lord, I love you, he doesn't say, I believe. Show me what you have laid down for me. I lay it all down again. To hear you say that I'm your friend. Listen. Show me the pride that you laid down. Show me how you exalted him above marriage. Show me how you have exalted him above money. Show, him, show me how you have exalted him above anointing, above ministry. Where does this fit in your heart? Not just that he's there, where in your heart? 
listen to me I stand before the God of my salvation before his people and I tell you this as God there is nothing in my life today that I cannot give God nothing nothing you've heard me say it if the Lord tells me this is my last ministration in my lifetime I tell you the truth people of God as I close this Bible there is no counselor that will make me open it as a preacher again I love him more than ministry I love him more than titles I don't use him I love him I don't use his power I love him I show you where you are missing it you are trying to use the anointing to get success you are trying to use him to get fame you are trying to use him to prove to the people in your village you are not a failure you are trying to use him to get a wife use him to get a husband you are trying to use him to get five points you are trying to use him to go abroad you are trying to use him and he says is that all i am to you is this all i am to you something that you use to get your fame when you are there you now say lord thank you you have been an effective ladder i use you to climb to this level now that i can get ministry open doors please remain the day i feel like i'm coming down i will use you and here he stands and says four square students is this all i am to you all i am to you is a giver of anointing all i am to you is a giver of marriage nothing wrong with it all i am to you is a giver of fame all i am to you is a giver of gifts all i am to you is a giver of power no i'm more than that i'm more than that i'm more than that i come to introduce to you tonight a god that wants your all not your talents your all not your gifts your all not your mouth your all not your finances your all and that whatever price it will take to not only know him but to serve him that you are willing to pay it i show you a living sacrifice one who will be used mightily in this time i show you one who god will carry the prayer requests of others and give you as a gift because you have proven to him that there is nothing He is everything to me. He is my life. I don't do it because I am a preacher. Brothers and sisters. By his grace. I have seen the grace of God. But you see. The more I see God do great things through my life. The more I return back to a point. Where truly speaking. Let me tell you. I love you more than these things. Sometimes I look and I say. God look at what you do with my life. And he says you can choose to stop. Me. Stop. I love him. I love him. I don't use him. I love him. There is nobody and nothing in this life that will take his place. Not gifts. Let the gifts go. Let, let the gifts leave me. Let people suspect I went to a herbalism. It's better at least if it will retain my position. Do you love him that much? I'm showing you what death will do to you. Prayer warrior, do you love him so much? I know you pray. But do you love him? Because if you love him and you fear him, it will be your delight to please him. So I will not come and destroy a dear lady or a dear gentleman. I will not come and preach a lie and smuggle money out of your pocket. I love him too much. It's not that I'm afraid of hell. It's that I love him too much. It is my joy and my pleasure to lift my life as a trophy to bring him glory. To say, Lord, as you search the 7.2 billion people in the earth, would you come across a young boy who loves you which is all and will give anything for you? It's true. For nothing in this world can satisfy that's my testimony. Jesus, you're the cup 
that won't run dry. Nothing in this world can satisfy. Yes, you are the cup that won't run dry. The pleasures of this world can satisfy. Jesus, you're the cup that won't run dry. The money of this world can satisfy. That's my testimony. Jesus, you're the cup that won't run dry. Listen. Listen. First question, hear me. If I can bring you to a point where I know you love him more than everything you seek, I show you a level where no enchantment, no witchcraft, no manipulation of darkness will be able to come to touch you. These are the kinds of people that God would rather a nation die than to lose one of them. Somebody will plan for your evil in the secret before he wakes up, God will show up and say, all men are not equal. Somebody has paid a price to love me with his life. You dare not say all men are equal. Sacrifice has separated men into spiritual cadres. There are men who can do anything for God. Anything. May you be one of them. Anything. So there is a circumcision happening to you right now as you are seated. God is saying, my daughter, it is true that that dream I showed you, you will be a powerful woman of God. It is true. Don't doubt it. But the key is allow me to do a work in you. Gentleman, that political dream that you see is not fake. There is an anointing. But the key is until you die, you will not be able to look at one billion and leave it quietly. No, sir. Mm. Pastor, it is true that you are going to have thousands of branches in the future. But would you allow me to walk on you? Because if you don't, you will find yourself killing people and conspiring even as a man of God. The question this morning is, will you let him? Will you let him to produce that death in you? Are you, are you going to be embarrassed at that circumcision? Abraham was circumcised as an adult. Listen to me. You know, when we come for meetings like this, there are some of you who are men of God and women of God and captains of industry and all of that. But listen, let me tell you something. When we come to his presence, it's a threshing floor. You take away your titles and keep them. And just cry before him. And say, Lord, search my heart. You know the truth. The truth that nobody will believe about me. I'm not embarrassed. But I cry before you. Let's solve it now before the devil disgraces me in the open. That's what needs to happen to you. And that's what is going to happen this morning. If I can achieve this, then the purposes of the Spirit for us this morning has been achieved. I'm yours, I'm yours. I'm yours forever. I'm yours, I'm yours. I'm yours. My heart is yours, it's yours. It's yours forever. It's yours. It's yours. It's yours. Very simple song. Says I'm yours. I'm yours. I'm yours. I'm yours forever. I'm yours. I'm yours. My heart is yours, it's yours, it's yours forever. Sing it one more time. I'm yours, I'm yours, I'm yours forever. I'm yours, I'm yours. I'm yours. 
I'm yours, I'm yours, I'm yours forever. I'm yours, I'm yours. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 1, it says, Seeing then that we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, who are they? Apostle Paul, Abraham, the generals of old, seeing that we are surrounded, they are watching us from the corridors of heaven. Joshua Selman, you must make it. You have come too far. Don't fail. If you fail, millions will fail because of you. There is too much investment of the Spirit. They are watching. Seeing then that there are many of you, the destinies of generations are upon your shoulder. Is it worth the risk? To scandalize your life at the top. Is it worth the risk to make yourself become the reason for someone's backsliding? Is it worth the risk to be discovered one day that you are a fornicator? One day that you are an adulterer? One day that you are full of pride? It says, seeing then that we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses. Hear me? The Bible says, let us lay aside, Kabbalah Kata. Lay aside, lay aside, lay aside, lay aside. Every pride, lay aside. Every secret sin, lay aside. Everything that does not name the name of Christ, lay aside. Every lying tongue, lay aside. Every falsehood, lay aside. Lay aside. Lay aside. Can you turn that to a prayer? Help me, O oh God. I cry to you, the God of my salvation. I can't tell lies forever. Help me. Help me. Lay aside. I lay aside pride tonight. A covenant of humility by revelation. I lay aside all and any form of immorality. I take you seriously. I take my ministry seriously. Don't pretend that you are free from what I'm saying. Don't pretend like it does not concern you. There is no big man in this prayer. There is no big man of God. We must all cry before God and say, Lord, we cry. We approach. We come to the cross. The place of cleansing. The place of true purification. Pray. Pray. Purify my conscience. Take away bitterness from my life. Lord, I'm a preacher. I'm anointed. But bitterness is killing me. I need to represent you. I die to bitterness. I die to loss. I die to the attributes of the flesh. Pray. I lay it all down again To hear you say that I'm the way Help me find a way Help me know you are 
Don't let my love grow cold. I'm crying out. Will you light the fire again? I need your discipline. I'm crying out. Will you light the fire again? You're praying. This is the end. This is the air I bring. Your holy presence. Just a few more minutes. Living in me. This is my daily bread. Let on a Diana. You are my daily bread. Make sure you're praying. Your very word. Ah. That is spoken to me. instrument playing in the next two minutes I don't know how you will cry to God but say Lord touch me no noise in this place everybody alone with God you don't have to come to the front wherever you are whether sitting standing everybody talking to God father I flog it out with destiny just bring those under the anointing but the rest you can just leave them Lord cry are we crying? Cry for your ministry. Help my destiny, O oh God. If my people, the Bible says, who are called by my name shall humble themselves, lead us cry. Executives cry. Men of God cry. Business people cry. Lift your voice and let's cry. Before the God who says a broken and a contrite heart. I will not despise. If we say we have not seen, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. We deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. We deceive ourselves. We deceive ourselves. We deceive our members. We deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, the Bible says God is faithful and just. The goal is not to make you feel guilty. The goal is not to condemn you. The goal is to open your heart for the mercy and the grace of God. This is the power of the cross. God's ability to save to the uttermost. God's ability to call you again. 
God's ability to give you a new beginning. Two, three minutes. As you are praying, a purging is going on. As you are praying, a purging is going on. Like the hair of Samson, your anointing is returning. As you are praying, the visions are returning. As you are praying, the signs and wonders that used to be there, returning back. Lord help my ministry I'm tired of falsehood I come before you genuinely Pray, pray Choir pray, leaders pray Everyone pray Let's be truthful before God If you are not truthful before God Who will you tell the truth? Don't make this some emotional lying thing. Lord, I repent of fornication. I love you, but I found myself in this cry. I repent. Lord, I repent of anger and bitterness. I repent. I repent of malpractice. I repent of every form of immorality. I love you, but I find myself in it. Tonight I access the power of the cross. Let the sweet fellowship be restored. I repent of prayerlessness, wordlessness. I repent of being one thing before people and another thing outside of people. I repent of sowing seeds of discord among brethren, making people hate themselves. I repent of abusing your power. You gave me an anointing. I've used it to make a name to merchandise for myself. Just two more minutes. Cry before your maker. Don't let the devil condemn you. But don't keep quiet either. He that conceals his sin shall not prosper. This is a threatening floor where God is bringing glory out of you. That death will walk in you so that life will be ministered to all who come to you. Come and make my heart your home. Come and be everything I am and all I know. Search me through and through till my heart becomes a home for you. It's my prayer, Lord. Come and make my heart your home come and be everything I am and all I know search me through and through till my heart becomes a home for you I like that you are the mighty God. Hey, la tobi tu. You are the glorious God. Halakara. You are the mighty God. Hey, la tobi tu. You are the glorious God. Halakara.
mighty God. Hey, let's all be true. You are the glorious God. I love my God. You are the mighty God. Hey, let's all be true. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Just one more thing and I'm done. Please don't miss tonight's meeting. Tonight's meeting will be an impartation. You need to carry something upon your life and go back with it. I want to bless you tonight from the depth of my heart. Are we together? I'm going to. Um, we can leave praying for the sick too. And we'll do everything in the night. You came here with any sickness. Let me tell you, just start waving it goodbye. Except God is not God. I don't care for how long. You came here, any academic issue, I don't, whether missing script, I don't care what it is. Except God is not God. Listen, listen. Please just permit me to give one instruction. Tonight, as you come here, whatever has challenged you, write it down. Come here with it tonight. Are we together? I don't care what the issue is. This thing is a grace. The Bible says every man should minister according to the grace. Don't leave anything behind. Even if it's your hair falling, write it down. Bring it here. Somewhere in the service we are going to collect it. And the fire from heaven will fall upon this thing. Listen. I tell you, many of you will be here. And your loved ones who are far and are not here call them to and write their request and say there is fire burning in Abelkuta let them know that you didn't just come for a student conference it's an encounter HIV nonsense cancer nonsense pile nonsense you write it and watch what God will do listen let me tell you I pity any man that has made himself an enemy to your family except God is not God Hallelujah. Lift your hands. When I stepped in here, just one thing I'm going to do now, and then we're done. There are spirits that have hijacked the destinies of people. I was seeing it right from the cars I entered. That's just what I'm going to do tonight. We'll continue in the evening. Just keep your hands lifted. Don't worry. You, you have done your best to come here. Let me do the praying for you now. <laughs> Who is like him? Lion and the Lamb Seated on the throne Listen The Bible says while men slept The enemy came This prayer I'm going to pray for you now Many of you What you call sickness Is caused by this spirit And they must let you go right now Are you hearing what I'm saying? Thank you Jesus Please, let me advise you, um, those holding people, you're going to see people manifest violently, guide them so they don't injure themselves. Whether or not, whether or not you are one of the ushers, if someone is around you, please just help them so they don't injure themselves. Are we together? Lift your hands. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray right now. I'm going to give you an instruction shortly, but just let me do the pray. I decree and declare as one sent by God. That every force, every embargo of darkness, sitting on anyone's destiny, sitting on anyone's life, help that lady. In the name of Jesus Christ, at the count of three, as you shout Jesus, I set fire. Get ready now, at the count of three. One, two, three, shout Jesus. I command those devils now. Get out of their life now. I command false spirits now. In the name of Jesus, 
I decree, I decree, I decree, help them, please, help them, whoever is by your side, I command every spirit, every cross, fire, there is an anointing, I command now, from the front to the back, let them go now, leave their destinies now, leave their destinies now. I'm praying for you. There are some of you, you go to bed in the night and all kinds of strange beings come to sleep with you and destroy your life. I lift my hands now. Fire is coming on all those people now. Receive that fire. Be free now. Be free now. Be free now. Lose them. And let them go. I break every covenant, every ordinance, every handwriting by the power of the cross. By the power of the cross. Lift your hands. The reason why some of you are failing academically is not because you are dull, there are ordinances that have tied our lives. But right now, as you sell Jesus, I see chains from the heads of many. Are you ready at the count of three? One, two, three. Chains be broken, Ketaka, by the power that is in the name of Jesus. Chains be broken. Chains be broken. Chains. Be broken. Chains. Be broken. Break. Chains. Break. Break. Chains. There is power in the name of Jesus. Hey, there is power in the name of Jesus to break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Hey, break every chain. Hallelujah. Hold on. Now, all those you have brought out, please, ushers, just what I want to pray a prayer now. I speak to every spirit represented. You know my voice. At the count of three, pack everything you have come with. Live your life now. One, two, three, go. Go now. Go, 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 go. In the name of Jesus, take away the causes. Take away the yokes. Take away the pain. Leave your destinies now. Leave your academics. Leave your finances. Take away the fibroid. Take away the HIV. Leave your life now. Out of their lives. Out of their destinies. Out of their lives, out of their destinies. In the name of Jesus, there is no peace for the wicked. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please, I repeat the instruction that I give you. I want you to come tonight desperate. There are people, what you see me do, this is why God brought you. That mantle must land upon your life tonight. Are we together now? Are we together now? I want to pray for you. We are rounding up now. We are done. Who is Christabel? Christabel. Christabel. I'm hearing the name Christabel. Christabel. 
That looks like a lady's name. Christabel. Who is that person, please? Please don't be rowdy. Don't, don't, you don't have to. I'm hearing a name, Christabel. Who is that, please? Christabel. Is there someone with that name? Abiodun. 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 No, hold on. No. You are wearing, there's a lady, you are wearing a black, you are wearing white shirt, but there is a black like a veil, something that you put here. Who is the person? Hold on, hold on. What's your name? Abiodun. Come. Just two minutes. Hallelujah. Where is your mother, my dear? Hold on. Hold on. Who is from Ekiti? You are the one from Ekiti. Where are you from? Ekiti. That's where your mother is. Is that true? Yeah. Do I know you? That's what I'm saying. I'm asking you a question. That your mother is from Ekiti State. We are going to pray. I see a major breakthrough coming for your family. Look at me. Do you believe what I'm telling you? It's going to happen and it will surprise you. Huh? It will surprise you in a way that, that, that you too will know. You heard what your president was saying about people. There is a lady's mother in one general hospital now as I speak. I, it's, I'm seeing like a hospital. It's, I think it's a general hospital somewhere. Please, who is that person? We, we have to go. We have to go. We'll do this in the night. But I'm seeing the Lord is revealing this to me to minister healing for that person right now. And it's going to be over. It's going to be over. It's going to be over. I'm looking at a lady. Two of your sisters are married. But none of them has a child. Miscarriage. Two of them. No child at all. None of them has given birth. Please, who is that person? The Lord is revealing to me. Who is that person? You are there. Come out. I want to pray for you. If, if you are there. Two of you. I am seeing two ladies. Like two sisters. Your own sisters now. Excluding you. They are yet to give birth. Make sure you are telling the truth. Don't just come out because you have to. Where are you? Who is the lady? Who is that? Make sure she's telling the truth. Where are they? Come, my dear. Where are they? One is at Idiroko. The other one is in Lagos. Where is that? Idiroko is in Lagos. It's here. Okay. How long have they been married? The first one has been married since 2006. 2006. How many years is that? 12 years. Look at how God is about to change somebody's life in one moment. 12 years. 12 years. The other one has been married how long? 2014. 2000, that's how many? Look at me. Do you believe? Yes, sir. That they will carry their children? Yes, sir. <laughs> see, before you believe a man, find out about him. You see, don't just believe just because you are afraid. Are we together? The Bible says to, about Samuel that God made none of his words to fall to the ground. My dear, after this service, call your two sisters huh, that I pray for them. Two of them will have boys. Two of them are going to have boys. Go and write it down and tell them the Lord says to so Who is this? The same case. You have two sisters. Come. Hey, there's witchcraft in this lady's life. Oh. Hmm? Where are you from, my dear? Delta State. Ekiti. Delta State. Delta State. Hold my hands. Just hold my hands. Put your hands there. Lord Jesus, by your mercy, let this lady's life and destiny be restored. I'm praying for you. Leave the issue of your sisters. I will pray for them. But in the name of Jesus, I pray for you complete freedom. The devil will not have access to your life again. And I pray for your sisters. I don't care whether they have wombs or not. I prophesy it's time for them to carry their children. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. 
Amen. We have to stop here. The spirit of a prophet is subject to a prophet. But let me bless you. Please don't miss tonight's meeting. Hallelujah. We are conserving time because I know that many of you have been here. You need to rest. You need to refresh and do some other things. But tonight, we want to come and set this place on fire. That every spirit, some of you, the fire you will take back to your campus. From the gate of your campus, the devil will know that something has changed. Hallelujah. There are some of you, because of the fire you take, before you go to your campus, you have to branch home first and deposit some of that anointing upon the works of darkness. The, the lady with, um, whose mom is in general hospital. Your mom is in a general hospital. Where? CH. Where is that? Okay, there's a hospital like that. We. Please permit me, we verify these things because we don't want anybody to think that maybe these things are stage managed. You know, the kind of world we live in, that's why we do all of that. That lady in black, just keep for me, let me see her, that one. Just keep her there, don't worry. I'm not speaking to her. In the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands. I command, first, a deliverance is happening to her, but after that, I'm seeing this lady carrying a very strong healing anointing. I stretch my hands from here now. Be free now. Let it be over. I curse that devil. Let her destiny go now. Help her, help her so you don't have to. Please. Help her, help her, help her. Ladies, you know what to do, please. In the name of Jesus Christ. Right now. I set you free. In Jesus' name. And in Jesus' name. Be set free. By the anointing of the Holy Spirit. And I pray for you that that healing grace... Let it come upon you. My dear, what's wrong with your mother? She has cancer. She has cancer. I'm saying that, is it that they want to cut one of her breasts? They've already cut one of her breasts. And I'm seeing the thing spread to the other one. Cry. Don't cry. Don't, it's okay. Don't, don't cry. You see, sometimes you know what it means to see your mother in this kind of situation. Don't cry, my dear. Please help her. Yeah? Father, by your mercy by the power of the cross all those who are related to this case as I'm praying for one now you see that something is happening to them in the name of Jesus may the angel of the Lord's presence enter that hospital right now and take away every single case of cancer Lord Jesus Please let our mother not die. Preserve her for your name's sake. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. My dear, please be comforted. Jesus is alive. In the name of Jesus Christ. Between now and evening, return with a testimony you did not expect. I want to pray for you just as a sign there are some of you that you are in here now you are stranded there is nobody on earth here who should be able to maybe help you even financially what I'm prophesying to you in the name of Jesus I'm, I want you to mark my word between now and evening in the name of Jesus if I be sent of God I program a cloud of favor over your life. I raise men now in the name of Jesus. I don't care, help them, please. I don't care who you know or you don't know. May my God surprise you. Listen. Some of you will return back with shock. You will see people who have not called you for years. Listen, no destiny helper comes on their own. They are called by prophecy. Hallelujah. Father, we give you all the praise. In the name of Jesus Christ, we give you all the praise and all the glory. We bless you. Let the name of the Lord be lifted.